Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 69. It's on angular impulse. Remember an impulse in physics is a force applied for a given period of time. Well then what's an angular impulse? It's when you're applying a force to a rotating system. Then what you're doing is you're applying a torque to that system. And so a good example of that is playing tetherball. When you hit the ball in tetherball what you're doing is applying a force perpendicular to the rope which comes from the center of that rotating system. So if we look at it from above when you apply a force in this direction so that's a torque what you're doing is applying a force for a given period of time. And that torque causes a change in the angular momentum it keeps spinning until eventually we get a force exerted by the pole when it gets to the center. And so if you have a rotating system like this, as long as it has angular velocity, then it's going to have angular momentum. Now let's say we apply a torque. So we apply a force to it for a given period of time. So if we draw in our force applied to that system, what's going to happen to the angular velocity and therefore the angular momentum of the system? Well, it's going to increase. We could figure out the direction using the right hand rule, but that change in momentum is equal to the torque times the amount of time that we're applying it for. And so that's going to be the angular impulse. If we know what that torque is, we know how much time it's going to be applied for, we immediately know what's that change in angular momentum. Now it's important that we understand the difference between translational and rotational motion. And so if I apply a force right to the center of mass like that, it's just moving in that direction. So I've accelerated that object. And like I showed you in the impulse video, if force is equal to mass times acceleration, if we say acceleration is the change in velocity over time and then we simply multiply both sides times time we now have momentum change on the right and we've got impulse on the left but this would be for a translational system where all the motion is in one direction that change in p or the change in momentum is the impulse now if we look at a rotating system like this where i apply a force like that it's rotating Let's get to our equations there. We now have a torque, and that torque is equal to the rotational inertia, instead of the mass, times the angular acceleration, instead of the acceleration. Now we could get that angular acceleration, break that out, that's going to be the change in angular velocity over time, multiply both sides times time again, and what do we get? Change in angular momentum on the right, and what do we have on the left? This is going to be our angular impulse or delta L. And so let me give you a specific problem. Let's say we've got a motocross person, they're going off a jump and they're applying a force up and that's causing them to do a flip like that. So if we solve a problem where we know what the force is, let's say it's a 25 Newton force in this direction, and we know the distance from that center of rotation, let's say it's 1.9 meters, and we know the amount of time that we're applying that force, let's say it's 0.53 seconds, we can solve the change in angular momentum. So change in angular momentum is simply equal to the torque times the change in time. Now what's our torque? Torque, remember, is going to be the product of the force times that radial distance. And so it's going to be force times radial distance times the change in time. So if I just plug in these values up here, what do we get? 25 newtons, 1.9 newton uh, distance from the center, and then times 0.53 seconds, I get a change in angular momentum of this. Solving for significant digits, I get 2.5 times 10 to the third newton meter seconds. That's going to be change in angular momentum. What would happen if we applied a greater force? We're going to have a greater change in, mo in angular momentum. What if we applied it for a longer period of time, we're going to have a greater change in angular momentum. Now how could you test this in the laboratory and make sure that this equation works? Well, it would be nice if we had a large spinning disk, we could apply a force on one side, maybe a rocket, so we could apply a torque to it for a given period of time and watch its, angular, uh, its change in angular momentum. It's difficult to do that, but we could have a setup like this, where we have a large disk and then we apply a force to it. So we're going to apply a perpendicular force, so a torque to it for a given period of time. Then we could use photogates to measure its change in angular momentum. And so did you learn to use appropriate mathematics to figure out angular impulse, change in angular momentum? And then finally, could you test the relationship between torque, time, and change in angular momentum? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.